is this very interesting story. So, um, are you guys familiar with um, Anna Delvey? So, um, Anna Delvey was this um, girl who essentially finagled and scammed a whole bunch of uh, New York socialites out of their money, out of their position, out of their prestige, in order to kind of move the, move up the ranks in the fashion world. It all came crumbling down a couple of years ago. They did a big expose about her in the New Yorker, which eventually led to people finding out that she was running a scam. Loads of people that she hadn't paid kind of came up and spoke about the story. And I think eventually she was it's eventually found out because she tried to secure like a multi-million dollar loan in order to kind of open her own foundation, which had involved, you know, dealing with banks, which involved dealing with lawyers. Which essentially rose, it, it, you know, brought some questions to the fore, and then I think as a final act of her desperation, she ended up scamming one of her best friends, quote unquote, right, out of I think nearly sixty thousand dollars or something. So just a complete, you know, scumbag. But when you were, when you read into the story a bit more, and I think I've I've kind of got more information on the story based on this podcast here that's available now on I think on your podcast app it should be available from the BBC. It's called Fake Hires. And it's a six-part um, podcast series. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the whole ser- of the whole scripted podcast, right? With the voices and shit, for the most part. It, it count me out. I like listening to podcasts where people are talking flagrantly and, you know, essentially just going off to see, see off their pants. But this is really well produced. They have, um, they have a really cool way of weaving the narrative together with these, like, made-up kind of um, conversations and dialogues between uh, the kind of Anna Delvey character and her friends which is really nice I quite like how they involved included that and in general it just brings the story to light but I think I was looking at his story and I was thinking about it a bit more and I my initial reaction was like you know this girl's a scumbag doesn't deserve to have friends it kind of falls in the Lena Dunham category for me right the Lena Dunham phenomenon I've never really understood why that lady had such a again it's changed now because of her little oopsies that she's done over the years but I remember when Girls was out, you know, you have to think when someone does, when someone's able to produce a work like Girls, right? She, she writ the show, right? She's, the, I'm pretty sure she's a writer or producer for the show. She created it, right? That's her story, essentially. And I look at Girls for Lena Dunham, even though it might not be true. I haven't looked this up, but I look at Girls as Lena Dunham's first album, right? They say an artist's first album is always amazing because they've had their whole life to, to write it, right? Essentially, um, you've been crafting in your room where no one was listening this sound and then finally when you get the chance to kind of present it to the world of course it's going to sound pretty good but it's the second album and the third album that ones that are going to be a bit tricky so i i think girls was that for her and also i think girls really sp- was a way to her to really get her story out there right kind of put her story on the screen and if you take that to the fore and of course you know it's fiction it's made up it's not real but you look at it you're like huh that character that lynn and plays in girls in real life wouldn't really necessarily have any friends in it like she's Quite a bad friend. She's pretty disgusting. Quite self-centered, egotistical, um, lacking in self-awareness. Just loads of things that you don't really want in an actual friend. Uh, um, and again, I think it transpired that over the years, you know, she ended up loads of controversy after controversy after controversy. And I guess it kind of goes to show just how much of a stinky person she is in real life, you know, based on the character you see of her playing in Girls. And I thought the same thing about Anna Delvey, but then when I kind of thought about it a bit more, I thought, you know what? I'm quite sympathetic to Lena Dunham and this Anna Delvey character because I think in their environment where they kind of grew up, where they were kind of cutting their teeth, where they were trying to establish themselves, make some inroads, that kind of personality is celebrated somewhat. And if, if for the most part, I would I would kind of go as far as saying, I don't think Anna Delvey or um, Lena Dunham are that unique or that special within their social group. I'm sure there's other people in their social group who are much more... In, who are way more annoying or grating socially, right? Who are kind of just very difficult to be friends with. I would assume so. And I also, I think the Anna Delvey character, I've got some notes here that I kind of want to span on. I think it just goes to show just how I think similar the fashion industry is to the entertainment industry in this way that no one really, I think outside of being a pattern cutter, right? No one really has a skill that can be proven, right? That can be kind of with facts or with experience like, hey, I've done this for five years. That means I'm better than you that's done it for three years. And it, it doesn't exist. Most of entertainment or fashion is kind of built under the premise, I think, or under the illusion that you can kind of get in if you blag it enough, right? If you're able to kind of, you know, finagle, finesse your way in, you can sort of like carve a career for yourself. And we've all got examples of it, right? We've all got friends, people that we know, people that we come across who we're pretty certain, you know, don't really have much upstairs or don't really have much to hand. 
as kind of proof of the quality of their work, but they were able to kind of come about just at the right time, hang in there. And again, it's, it's a case of persistence, right? If you, if you hang around long enough in a subculture or a scene, you will become the authority. I saw it happen with the blogs, right? There were tons of blogs that happened when started when Hypebeast was around. But Hypebeast just stuck with the whole Hypebeast streetwear thing. And then they tend to, and then they ended up being the go-to, right? The Bible, the sort of like main destination place that people go to to read that kind of news. And that isn't because they're better than anyone else. It's because they just hanged in longer enough. So there's loads of things that happen that kind of relate, that kind of uh, cause people to act a certain way. But you can get sometimes negatively reinforced, right? That can be one thing that happens a lot. Um, and of course, that negative reinforcement in general will fuel bullshit, right? It fuels the worst kind of person in your industry. That kind of person that is essentially, you know, <sighs> how do you describe it? They're not, they're not there for the right reasons, right? That, that, that's the kind of person that is kind of brewing in these kinds of circumstances, I would, I would say. The person that's not there for the right reason, the person that's just there to kind of essentially, um, uh, I don't know, they're, just, they're using it as like a status or a clout thing. I think you heard that a lot from Yana Delvey's story. She thinks she mentioned towards the end that she wasn't in it for the money. It wasn't about scamming people for money. It was about power. It was about influence. It was about clout. It was about um, walking into a room and people kind of freaking out that you're in there and kind of wanting to come over to you and ask you questions. People hitting you up about the parties, all that sort of stuff. That's what she kind of was in it for, right? Um, and in her eyes, from her experience of being in the scene, that was a way to go get to go get it, right? Of course, she went by she went by it. The kind of crazy way but so some in some cases it does work so don't blame in that regard and then also what it goes to show is just her is her canniness really because the story is quite interesting because she gets her inroads or she gets her kind of cosign because she has a short internship working for purple magazine and if you're not familiar purple was a very it still is at the time as i guess in the fashion scene it's very influential but i would say maybe outside of fashion maybe it's kind of run its course but um, Purple is a is a magazine founded by Olivier Zam, who's you know a very influential person in fashion. Um, kind of the guy that gallivants around town wearing the denim jacket, skinny jeans, and uh, Chelsea boots and shit with this ABA glasses on all the time. So he runs this um, this uh, magazine called Purple. And I guess for, if you're Anna Delvey, it was a very clever ruse, a very clever tactic to get into the scene because she could have easily decided to go for Vogue, right? ID magazine. Um, I don't know, whatever else, right? Name the big uh, bait magazines out there. But it said she went the opposite way and decided to go really niche and pick out a magazine that's very well with people in the industry that has a lot of connections, whose editor is larger than life, someone that you can kind of name drop somewhere because, you know, unfortunately, most people won't be able to name drop the ID magazine editor or maybe the original founders, probably more so, but not editor, right? Or the creative director even. No one really give a shit. But if you name drop Olivier Zam, you know, at a Paris Fashion Week after after party, you're most likely going to get a lot more of a favorable response. So that was a very clever tactic on, on her behalf. Something that I didn't think uh, of actually before I read the story. I was like, huh, because you read it and you're like, how did everybody get hoodwinked for so long? But then, you know, if someone comes in with that co-sign into the room, into the space, right? Um, it's very difficult for you, the lowly intern, or for you that's also trying to get your way in there to kind of deny them and say, nah, I think you're trying shit. It's very difficult for you to like feel that you have the permission to do so, right? You're just going to let them carry on, even though deep down you think they're definitely chatting shit. <laughs> um, what else is on here? Uh, the deal. Oh, and at the end, I also love that she wasn't sorry. She didn't apologize at the end. She basically said that, you know, the game is, it is what it is. And I have a lot of respect for it. You know, I have a lot of respect for it because I think, so I get this sausage out of my mouth. Um, no pause needed. Uh, I think it's interesting because when I look at the story, right? Hmm, let me see how I can talk it properly. I like how she didn't say sorry because I think for the most part, why should she be sorry? Think about it, right? If fashion is built up on chances, I would say for the most part, most people are lying about their experience level, what they've done, um, about their knowledge on a certain subject or about their skill level. It's just They're just plain lying, right? I, I don't, I've not met anyone in fashion who's kind of doing it, you know, legit, who's doing it kind of, you know, who's kind of spoke about their experience in a very black and white kind of vanilla way it's not it's not interesting it's boring right you're gonna you're gonna kind of you know embellish the truth you know and fluff some bits up here and there it's part of the story and it? it's fun um but the but i think for the most part there is also an understanding 
a subconscious understanding that you're just using this ruse just to get in the door. You're not going to continue being this person. You're going to be the kind of person that's talk is talking about their fucking shoot that you're doing with your friend in the back of your garage like you're doing like you're being commissioned by fucking Arena Plus Home. You're going to do that. You're going to give that impression. But you're only doing that because you, you haven't got an in yet. But you're telling yourself, hey, once I get in, I'm going to become a respectable, honest, hardworking, um, straight to the point kind of person, right? I'm, I'm not going to keep keep up this ruse, this kind of chancer ruse. But there are some people, obviously, that kind of keep it up and continue being the chancer. And, you know, and we know those people. We've seen them around when we're out and about. But I don't think everyone does that. Everyone, for the most part, does uses the kind of chancing thing alive for just to get in. I think her downfall, Anna Delvey, was that she used the chancer thing to get in. And once she realized how easy it was just to finagle it, she didn't. She made no effort to back up her claims. She wanted to open this non-for-profit you know, a charity kind of, you know, creative workspace thing, you know, with a, a shop downstairs, a gallery in the middle, a studio upstairs, you know, that kind of stuff that everyone does, right? Um, but she didn't even try to attempt to kind of hire out a space, do a gallery exhibition, commission some work, whatever. She didn't do anything. She just essentially continued talking about things, which people do in the scene too, don't get me wrong. You only have to go to a gallery opening you know, at Protein Studio and bump into a couple of old friends and you'll, you know, be inundated with everyone's fucking projects that they're doing, right? Everyone, like, it's, it's a constant bane of my life seeing my talent designer friends, you know, uploading line sheets on Instagram or on social media. Oh, look, this is a shirt idea I'm thinking about. Like, stop giving me PSD files and line sheets. Like, like honestly, print the shit. It doesn't cost that much. If you just stop drinking or stop smoking and shit, you could afford a couple of runs of t-shirts that you can just print out for yourself. And if you sell one, good. If you don't sell any, no problem. It could be part of your portfolio. And that, you know what I mean? An actual real t-shirt. Um, anyway, but that's, that's by the point. You get that a lot anyway. Like I said, that kind of personality, I see it so often that I'm not really that mad about the story. I think the story is amazing. Um, so much so now I've read that they're going to, they've actually optioned the show, um, which, is, which is cool because I think when you read the story, you get really sad, or I did anyway for the girl, the friend that's involved that she eventually scammed at the end. But um, luckily that girl wrote a book and now that book has been bought out, I think by Netflix or one of these streaming platforms. Uh, another lady who also wrote a story about Anna Delvey had her, I think the original New York Times piece actually, it got bought by Netflix to be developed into a show. Um, another kid who's I think the bus boy at a hotel she stayed in last who kind of like ended up being her kind of you know friend quote unquote he's also been uh, tapped up to be a consultant for a show so everyone that essentially got ripped off by this woman has essentially uh, got their money back and some of course the turmoil they went through emotionally physically mentally is just you know you can't i wouldn't wish out my worst enemy right i have a situation now at the moment with an old boss who's kind of holding out on paying us unpaid wages i can only imagine what it must be like when you lend somebody that you think is a russian oligarch's daughter money and she you know essentially kind of fucks you over and never apologizes it can, it can be awful but i i love the fact that there's some sort of silver lining in the story and that these people are being you know kind of supported and they're being looked after by the entertainment industry because it doesn't always happen that way and of course for some way, some may say, oh, it's, it's horrible anyway, because why is she getting, why is um, Anna Delvey getting any kind of praise, right? Why is she even getting the option to kind of, you know, be able to have a show or to even have this, have be a consultant? Unfortunately, this is the way the, the world works, isn't it? Same way that how when 6 9 comes out, he'll be a bigger star than he was when he went in. Unfortunately, we can't really do anything about 